Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Last of Us TV show. This came out last year and I never watched it because I just didn't feel like it. But uh, today I felt like watching it so I binged the entire show and uh, here's my thoughts on it. So uh, I'm a person who's never actually played the video game. I've just never bought it. <laughs> it was pretty expensive. So I never played the game. Uh, I was planning to do it but you know this, this was a lot cheaper watching a show instead for free. So my review is coming from a person who's never played the game and is only watching the show. And like, you know, a lot of the complaints I've heard about the show is it doesn't really follow the video game. So this is going to be like my point of view of the show. So going into this, I was expecting, you know, Walking Dead basically. Uh, I love the Walking Dead game. Uh, I was expecting just a Walking Dead story of just, you know, an old man in the apocalypse taking care of a little girl. Which, you know, that, that trope does get really like old, you know, Mandalorian. Pedro Pascal is in this, he plays Mandalorian. I like Logan. Taking care of, you know, little people in the apocalypse, young, you know, naive, gullible kids. It's like, it's a trope that can get done to death and it kind of has recently in media. But this show, it does it a bit differently. Like some of the tropes that you'd expect from like a show like that, it's not really, you know, shoved in your face as much. It's a little more subtle. Like Ellie, the, uh, you know, little girl in the show, um played by Bella Ramsey, which I think she did a good job. A lot of people were hating on her. I, I went on Reddit once and I saw like all this hate towards her saying she's ugly, she's nothing like the game. And honestly, I think people like that, just they got attracted to a video game character and they're angry that this real life actress is, you know, playing her. She's not ugly. She wasn't bad. She wasn't annoying. I can name like 10 other fucking little girl characters who annoy the shit out of me more than her. She was fine. Like, this is just me, point of view, haven't played the game, don't even know what Ellie's like in the video game. She was fine. I did not have a problem with her. For me, it, it did feel kind of like I kind of needed to play the game to understand what's going on, because a lot of the things they tell you, the game, the show just tells you, and you're expected to remember that. Like, to this day, I still have no idea what the QZ is. I'm not sure what the clickers are supposed to be. Like, I, they did add a lot more um, backstory into the infection and like the whole bombing which I heard wasn't in the game, so that kind of helped me a bit. But um, there was like that, that one big-ass clicker, like that fucking hulking clicker that just shows up once, tears a guy's head off, and then never like comes back. That I wish I was explained as to why he was there. But yeah, I don't really know what to like say in terms of pacing. There's like... The first the first episode I really liked, it was kind of explaining, you know, it started in, in the past, in the flashback of uh, 2003. Then, you know, the outbreak happened, Joel loses his daughter, Sarah... I think that's her name, uh, he's sticking with his brother, and, you know, it's, it could have been a lot better, it could have been a lot worse, the first episode was fine, I liked the way it was going, then episode two, I was, it wasn't really doing it for me, it was kind of boring, I was expecting a lot more action, this show doesn't have a lot of action, it doesn't have, like, a lot of clickers roaming around the city, it's more of, a, like, a realistic take, if an apocalypse was going to happen, because, like, if zombies were in the real world, the military would take care of it, for sure, like, that, they wouldn't, the military would not get killed by zombies. So, like, in the show, the clickers are just underground most of the time because the military, you know, is doing their job and they're trying to secure the world. So that, that does explain why there's not as much action. But, like, if you're going into this show expecting a zombie show, expecting an apocalypse, like, Walking Dead type show where it's just blood, gore, you know, fighting zombies every episode, you're not going to get that. It's barely even going to be in it. The show is basically just a drama. And if you're not into that, then... I would say don't even watch it. Just play the game for more action. Because a lot of episodes are kind of filler. Like, there's a, one episode... I think you, we all know the episode I'm talking about. In episode 3, where it's focusing on the gay couple. And yes, it does feel forced. It is very cringy and just awkward as hell. I don't know why they decided to focus on these two characters for an entire episode, even though they're dead. Like, these two characters you're never going to see again. I get it's for world building, but if you're going to do world building, at least keep them alive. It just felt forced, the whole romance between these two survivors that just met in one day. They started having sex, and they started, sh like, showing that. Like, you know, if you're gay, that's fine, but, like, Jesus Christ, don't force it into a fucking show. I get that the, they're gay in the game, but, like, you know, the character actually survived, and we got a lot of cool action scenes with them. It just felt so weird just having these two characters divert from the game. And then them just fucking die and having a whole episode focusing on their romance. It would just kind of brought down the show, especially in the third episode. So I, w I will say the first half of the show, it just wasn't doing it for me. It, it wasn't really giving me anything I wanted to see. Like, it was just kind of mediocre. I'm, I'm going to be honest. The, the first half of this show was shit. Um, <laughs> in my mind, I just can't see myself rewatching it. It wasn't until Joel got stabbed by the baseball bat. And, you know, Ellie was kind of on her own. We started learning more about her and her flashback. That was kind of interesting. 
that's when the show really started to pick up. And, you know, she gets kidnapped by that cannibal guy. He was a really creepy villain. Some of the villains just get, like, introduced out of nowhere and then they just die. I, I like it when, you know, shows do that. But again, that's, that's like, at the final couple episodes. So, I'd say, like, the, the final couple episodes like, the best episodes to watch in the show. The rest of it was just kind of, eh. But anyway, so the main reason I wanted to make this video was to give my thoughts on the actual final episode of the show, because I have a lot to say about it. So it opens up with the birth of Ellie, and the actress who plays Ellie's mum is um, Ashley Johnson, which she voiced Ellie in the game, which I thought was really cool. It's kind of like poetic that the voice actress of Ellie is giving birth to the actual character. You know, it warmed my heart. Even though I didn't play the game, and I don't like have nostalgia for it, I can just tell that that's a pretty cool moment to have. But... The whole focus of this whole show, the whole thing it's been leading to is getting Ellie to a hospital so they can test her blood because she's immune to the clicker bite. So eventually, you know, the first half of the episode was a flashback and then Ellie and Joel walking around this like abandoned city for about, you know, a good 10 minutes. It kind of dragged on and then like once they finally got captured by the military, I'm like, oh, we're already halfway through the episode. I wonder what's going to happen. And, you know, this uh, general lady from the first episode, I don't, I don't know her name, I don't I can't be fucked researching what her name was. But she's like, okay, we have Ellie. We're going to do surgery on her. But unfortunately, we're going to have to kill her. We're going to have to dig into her brain, get some like chemical type shit. But it, as a result of killing Ellie, we're going to save the entire fucking world. We can make a vaccine out of her DNA. The whole world can be, be cured from this fucking clicker disease. The world can go back to normal. And, you know, the thing is, I, I would have been okay with that. Like... Over the course of the show, we learn a lot about Ellie, about her struggles and her past and, like, who she is as a character. It, it does take a while, but, like, I know all of that now, and I still, I felt nothing. I'm like, okay, let's kill her. There's still, I'd say, a billion people left on the fucking planet you can save. And I feel like even Ellie would, you know, be okay with that. She'd be okay with sacrificing herself. But the thing is, Joel, he doesn't want that. He doesn't want that for her. He has, like, trauma from his, you know, Sarah dying. He doesn't want to lose another, you know daughterly figure in his life so he does the unspeakable and he kills the, that entire fucking hospital and th the whole music the way it's shot it's like i'm not sure how i'm supposed to be feeling about this i'm not sure if i'm supposed to be rooting for joel i was watching some reaction videos and everyone's like yeah you tell him joel you save ellie but it's kind of like the aunt may paradox you know in marvel spider-man a spoiler alert, aunt may dies and peter has a cure in his hand he could cure her but everyone else would die but if he lets her die, they might have enough to, you know, kill the entire city. So it's kind of like, would you choose the selfless choice and save one person or do the selfless choice and save everyone, everyone who's on fucking planet Earth? Would What would you choose? That one person you care about or everyone on Earth? And, you know, I don't like how Joel, he chose a selfish choice. And I hope in season two, when that does come out, that, you know, he gets what's coming to him. And I, I've seen the spoilers in the game, what happens to Joel, spoiler alert, he dies. And... You know, I feel like he kind of fucking deserves that. He had the fate of the fucking world in his hands, and he said, nah, I'm going to go save Ellie. And he killed so many people in the process. That one surgeon who tried to stop him, he's like, I'm not letting you take her. He shoots him in the head. The general lady, he's like, you'll just you'll just come back for her. I'm shooting you. And it just felt so, like, mean-spirited, so cold-blooded. It just felt out of character. I, don't, I can't see this coming anywhere from Joel. Like, I get he He lost his daughter. It just felt so weird. And, you know... The last line of the whole show is, "You, I swear to me that you, what you told me about those fireflies were true. It's like, I swear. So I hope next season she finds out, she gets angry at him, and Joel dies. That's what I hope for. Because Joel, what a, what a fucking, what a fuckwit. Anyway, um, would I recommend the show? Not really. I'd say buy the game. I've, I've heard the game's a lot better. The show is just like something to watch if you're like, not really into video games. You just want it to play in the background. It's pretty boring, I'm not going to lie. The show is boring, the first half of it. The second half is where it kind of like picks up, but even then, there's only a couple episodes that are like really good. So, I don't know. I wouldn't really recommend it, but if you played the game and you liked it, then I'd say watch the show. That's just my thoughts on The Last of Us. Comment down below if you enjoyed the show as well. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you later. Bye.